Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27 says, Then God said, Let us make him in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In his divine image, he created him. Male and female, he created him. Hello, my name is Sandra Timko, and welcome to Lumen Christi. I am so excited to share with you the guests that I have on this program today. There is such an amazing amount of information that I think that we may have to do two or three segments. And I advise you to get a piece of paper, a tablet of paper and a pencil or pen, because almost every family in America has been scraped by the malady of autism. And this man comes with a wealth of knowledge on the origin of of autism, some of the problems that prevail and a solution to ending this malady. But before I talk with Dr. Marv Anderson and introduce you to this this serious man of God who's been raised up at this time to um, champion this cause, I'd like to tell you uh, a memory that I had recently about autism. It occurred to me the other day in preparing for this show that about 26 years ago was the first time I even heard that name. A friend of mine, close friend of mine's child was diagnosed with autism. And through his walk, through our journey in our friendship, um, I watched this child locked in his own world, um, encumbered by even uh, normal sounds. He had hypersensitive hearing, which uh, contributes to the behaviors, uh, exaggerated behaviors uh, in autism. But I was surprised from the time this child was born until recently how there is this huge increase in autism. And autism has finally struck a chord closer to my home and my heart with a grand nephew of mine being diagnosed um, about eight years ago. So that being said, I wanted so very much over the years to do a show that pertained to this information and the Lord brought us the answer. And hopefully it's the answer you need as well. And Dr. Marv Anderson, welcome. Thank you very much, Sandra. You know, doctor, there are so many credentials that you come with. And just to give you greater credibility, so anyone that's highly educated will say, yes, that man certainly must know what he's talking about. I just want to start by saying that you train. your training included graduation with honors from the University of Notre Dame. You're a graduate of Georgetown University School of Medicine. He also completed his residency in internal medicine at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons, Harlem Hospital Center, and is board certified in both internal medicine and clinical nutrition. He was appointed a research associate in the Department of Microbiology at Columbia University, and also in the carcinogenesis branch of National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland. And you are a um, retired assistant clinical professor of medicine at the University of Michigan Medical School, Henry Ford Hospital campus. But bringing us up to date, um, you decided to leave your position in 2009 um, to become a part of a um, practicing complementary and alternative medicine to establish a consultation practice to help children with, with autism. And so that has been your passion. Now, we need to understand and make this simple for us 
simple-minded people that are just trusting in the Lord's will and way, you have realized that there is a real root to the cause of autism. This is not just a hit and miss thing, okay? So let's start from the beginning. I was not amiss in saying that these numbers have increased. There's a belief that uh, vaccination is a big part of this. Um, you have some wonderful information about how this can be prevented, some true solutions, and some coping mechanisms to help deal with people that are struggling with this. We also know that it is splintering the American families. The stress from it is absolutely causing huge divide. So, the root of autism. The root of autism, you know, uh, I wish I could tell you it has a single cause. But as a matter of fact, there are many factors that are involved in the genesis of autism. And I think the answer is, is to try to learn to tie them all together. I'll give you an example. One of them is biochemical individuality. That means that we're all different. And when you think about that, the, uh, that means that we can tolerate things in a different way. I might blush uh, when somebody says something and another person might not. This is an example of how different we are, each are chemically. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we have the biochemical individuality we have to take into account. Secondly, there are uh, inherited predispositions to autism or to diseases in general, to diabetes, to heart disease. Each person has a set of genes, and those genes dictate to a degree, you know, our weaknesses, our inabilities, mm -hmm. our predispositions. But it's important to realize that in addition to our genes, we have our nutrition. Our nutrition overlies the genes and in a way causes them to be expressed or not expressed according to really what we eat. So just to summarize so far now, we've talked about biochemical individuality. You know, we've talked about genetic predisposition. We should probably mention something about the environment. Okay. You know, the environment, uh, Sandra, has become increasingly more toxic. Uh, for example, um, in, uh, in, it's been established in Texas, I believe this is correct, that for every thousand pounds of mercury that is released into the air, autism increases uh, over 60%. That's, that's an environmental factor. You know, our food supply is absolutely despicable. It's bad for four reasons. The first that I can figure out, the first reason is, is that we choose bad food, and so that's what is produced and provided for us. The second reason is, is that our food supply is nutritionally depleted. In 1939, the then Henry Wallace, the Secretary of Agriculture of the United States, wrote, we have treated our soil poorly, you know, and only at that time because of the, because the soil was not tended carefully, which was a dictate that we got from God in the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. to tend the soil. Since that had not happened in that time, only 42% of our American farmland was commercially usable because it had been depleted. All right, just for simple explanation, explain some of the reasons how the depletion of the soil happened. Being bombarded with chemicals in farming? That came after World War II. Okay. This was before the chemical era. And that's a very good question. Well, thanks. We can take him. <laughs> He's pouring them in. Go ahead. <laughs> Go on ahead. Give credit where credit that's is right. due. That's right. <laughs> um, if you and I were to start a, um, a, a, a farm and we would go into the woods and cut down the trees and plant crops. We would have about 10 years of nutrients in the soil. After that, all the nutrients would be taken up and unless they would have been replaced into the soil, both the soil and the crops that came from the soil would be nutritionally depleted. That's what's happened in our country. That's the background. And remember, we're talking about we choose poor food, number one. Number two, the food on which the soil is grown is nutritionally incomplete and deprived. You know, it would take many, many cans of spinach to 
give the iron that uh, was provided in when Popeye was first created. You know, the third thing is that after the war there was a tremendous deluge of chemicals put on the soil, pesticides, and so on. And Rachel Carson uh, popularized this in her book, The Silent Spring. She was, a, she was a very wise woman. And because of her concern, the Environmental Pollution Agency came into being. Really? Yeah, so we, so we have now, we have not only depleted soil, but we have soil that is filled with chemicals. And then the last thing, and, uh, and it's something that's not very well known, but I, I think it's very important, is that it has been discovered that our fertilizer, our farm fertilizer, is being used as a toxic waste dump, as a filler. In other words, the chemicals that industry produces, uh, pickling solutions from steel, for example, and so on, are placed into the fertilizer as a way of getting rid of them. And they are being deposited in our, in our ground. And they, too, have the potential of reaching the surface water and getting in through the roots of the plants. So we're talking about autism now, mm -hmm. and just going back to focus, we talked about biochemical individuality, genetic predisposition, a toxic environment, bad food, 